This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. More on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is going to be a Hoya update. Now I will preface this immediately by saying that they're not all here, right? I know I've hauled a few Hoya in my time. I actually don't know how many I had at one given point. Some have inevitably died, some are up in the studio and it's just too much of a pain in the ass to pull down. Also, you'll see them when we do the studio sort of rearranging, so I'm not going to show you those. I do have some down here. It's kind of a mixed bag, I'm going to be honest, and I have some propagations of some of my originals as well. So you're not going to see full big pots of Hoya, you're going to see the itty bitty two leafers that I bought a long time ago in something like summer 2021. So I'm going to get straight into it. I'm not going to waste any time. This is going to be in no order at all. I'm just going to pick them up. I will say to you right now that they are not looking amazing. I will not lie. They are not. They are looking a bit shit, guys. Basically, they've been neglected a lot. My shop stuff has taken over. If there's any priority on something to be done, obviously it's pretty much always something else in the shop. On with the first Hoya. I'm going to do my best to remember the names because it's been a long time since I dipped my toe into Hoya. So here we go. I'm going to start with this one because it's right near my feet and I need to move it as soon as possible so I don't stand on it. This here is my beautiful Hoya Carnosa Compactor Mauna Loa, which basically means it's a variegated compactor, only the variegation is in the middle of the leaf, so not on the margin. I don't know the best place to show you that. Possibly here. If I go up to the camera and hopefully it lets me focus. Can you see that? That's literally right there how it actually looks. So it's not variegated on the outside, it's variegated on the inside. I can't remember if I had one variegated on the outside. Sort of, sort of. I have another variegated compactor here, but I don't think that's why I bought it, if I remember rightly. This, it has grown. I promise you it has grown. I would have to literally compare it side by side with, you know, the video that I originally took. I believe it hasn't grown a lot, but these Hoya are known for not really growing much. So I wasn't really expecting to get much out of it. It's been nice and it's certainly been a lot easier and I mean a lot easier than my other variegated compactor, which I will hold up for you just after this one. The other variegated compactor I've had nothing but problems with, but this one's actually been fine. So I really love him and he's really easy. He hasn't really sprouted much else for me. I think there's a little bit of new stuff at the back. That's what the pot looks like on the inside. Sorry, I can't really tip it up very well. So that's what it's looking like. It is looking good. It's just, it doesn't grow very fast, but hey, this is is Hoya, right? Some Hoya grow really quick, some don't. This isn't one that does. They might be a bit dusty, by the way. They might have the odd spider's web on them. I assure you they are spider webs and not uh, spider mites or anything like that. So yes, that is my Hoya Carnosa Compactor Mauna Loa. So variegation on the inside. To compare with that, in one moment, I'll show you a guy that has not done so well. Now, I don't know why he hasn't done so well. Could be a light thing. Could just be, oh, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know what it is. Maybe it just wasn't as strong a plant. But this here is my Hoya Carnosa Compactor. You know what it is? I can't remember what it is. If someone knows what it is, please write it down below because I've totally forgotten. So this one, yeah, I'll show it up close to you, but the new growth on it's looking pretty gorgeous. Let me just show you the new growth on the bottom first. You see that? That's looking quite nice, isn't it? Oh, let's get right up on that because that looks really pretty. Look at that. How pretty is that? It's a lovely thumbnail, that. So that looks good, but in the spirit of true transparency, I need to show you the little section of it that's further up. I'm going to spin it round and I'm going to show you there. Can you see the damage on that? Now, I don't know to what extent this is my neglect for this plant. I don't know to what extent that this happens anyway. I'm not 100% because as many of you guys may know, I've dipped my toe into Hoya, but one, I have not been able to care for them unless they've been in the studio. And two, I just don't know enough. So if this happens to you, let me know. I mean, is it happening on the variegated bits? Yes, sometimes. Now this was in the studio upstairs and I actually brought it down because it was, it's hard to explain, but it was actually sat above my sofa in the studio. And as a result, because these things overflow really quickly, I don't think I was watering it quite enough. And I know these guys like to dry out, but honestly, when you underwater a Hoya, you know you've got an underwatering problem and you know you're too busy, which is weird for me, by the way, because I'm usually an overwaterer. 
But anyway, so I think that's what's happened. So that is why I brought him downstairs. But since I have, I have to say, I think this whole chunk at the bottom is new growth since he's been downstairs for a few months. And he is doing an awful lot better. Can you see that? So I'm just hiding my face. He has done an awful lot better since then. So I'm pretty pleased with him. If you're interested, I will hold up the man alone really quickly again so that we can see the difference. I think I did this in my original video as well. Don't get wrong, they're both awesome. I mean, look at them. But if you see there, if you've ever wondered which one you would prefer to purchase, this is the difference. In my experience, this one is easier. I actually wouldn't say it grows faster in my experience, but it is definitely easier and it can take more of a punch and doesn't seem to care if it gets underwatered quite as much as this one. Maybe this one's just had a bad run, but if I hold that up for you there, this one certainly looks more photogenic on camera, like for sure, than this one does. This one's a little bit more muted, you could say, but they're very beautiful. Look at that. They've both got the same little coily going on in the end. So I do love them. I still love them just as much. They've just been a bit difficult for me, which I kind of knew they would be. I kind of knew they would be. Now, I've got a tiny little pot full of another one of these. I don't know if I ever showed you that at some point, but I still have that. It hasn't grown much. I haven't picked it up just because I don't want to show you three million of the same plant. And I did have a green one of these. I did just have the plain compactor. I think that got neglected to the point where it just died. So I actually don't have the green one anymore. I'll be honest, I'm not too sad about it, mainly because I think I complained at the time that I was very underwhelmed with it. I think I bought it from a shop and I was very underwhelmed with the size. So as shit as it is, I'm not that mad about it. I'm not that mad about it. Right, I'm going to put these down real careful. This next plant I have to show you is Hoya. Is it Wayetii Varigata? I think. I do have another one to show you in a minute. It's very special if you remember that one. And I will compare those as well because it's really, it's really useful for someone that's going to buy Hoya. So that's what that looks like. It's basically a Hoya Wayetii that has variegation. But the variegation is up through the middle and the margins tend to be darker. So if I try and show you that, not a lot's happened. Obviously, this has grown a bit longer, but it's also green, so you could argue it would. If I just tilt that, you can see how well that's grown. It's looking all right, you know. Now, if anybody remembers, this was actually three or four smaller plugs. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see on camera. You might not be able to tell, but there is sort of like four little, just... I can't really explain, just plugs there where they've been planted in. So this looks cute, but it is four smaller plugs that I bought. So I guess I recommend doing that if you want something a bit fuller. Not that I would say this was a full plant. This is pretty, it's pretty small. Oh, I've just found a lovely leaf. I have to show you it. I have to show you it. Let me just get it out. I've got a half and half there. You see that there? where my finger is. How pretty is that? So when these leaves get a bit sun stressed or just more sun on them generally, you do get some pinky coming in, which is super, super nice. But I remember when I was doing a big Hoya order, I happened to find something real special and I have to show you it and I have to compare it with this because it's also done very well, actually. Very, very well. Hoya connoisseurs among you may know what I'm about to hold up, but let me get the little saucer because I like the little saucers. A special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Surfshark. Have you ever wondered what kinds of data that websites are collecting about you when you browse the internet? Perhaps you're worried about your privacy when using public networks. Surfshark is a virtual private network that allows you to browse online privately. It masks your IP address and encrypts all of your data. This means that anyone that tries to spy on you or collect your data won't be able to see what you're doing or where you actually are in the world. This is super useful if you're using, for example, a smartphone or a laptop in a local coffee shop, airport, or anywhere else with free Wi-Fi. The best part is, though, that regardless of where I'm traveling to in the world, I can always watch my favorite Netflix shows from the UK. Or... If I want to see what's on in the US, for example, I just change my IP address on the fly to somewhere in the US and boom, US Netflix unlocked, all under my original subscription. To try Surfshark for yourself, visit the link in the description below and the link on screen and use code Kaylee Ellen for 83% off and an extra three months for free. Thank you very much, Surfshark, and back to the video. I'm probably going to tilt lecker everywhere when I tilt this. But this here, I'll show this to the camera as well. Please focus on the plant. There we go. I'm going to try not to move for a bit. 
So this here is Hoya, it's either Wayeti or Kentiana, Lori Lynn. And I think that's L-O-R-I, Lori. And basically the special thing about this plant is it's, it's essentially variegated on the margin. This isn't really doing it justice, if I'm honest. What happens is when it gets the sun on it, those margins turn pink. And there is a lot in here. There's also a lot of variegation going on on here, can you see? They come in pink and it's so nice. Let me just tilt it again so you can see a little bit better if I put it up to the camera. Come on camera, you can do it. I believe in you. There you go. So it is more subtle to the, I think it's Wayeti Eye, not Kentiana. I think this is Wayeti Eye as well. So I think it's the same plant essentially. This is a very similar situation as with the Carnosa Compacta. This one is variegated on the inside and this one is variegated on the outside. So if you were one of the people that with showing you the last plants, you preferred the more muted one, then this is probably the Hoya for you. Whereas if you preferred the more variegated one, this might be the Hoya for you. I'll show them up to the screen again, hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't want to look at my face. I am trying to hide it, I promise. There you go. So there is a difference, but it's really what you prefer. Now I love this one. This is adorable and it's still really small from when I got it and I didn't get a lot of it. This is quite hard to find this one. I know a lot of people, if they've ever found big ones in garden centers, at least was it in the UK or was it in Europe? Certainly during COVID, if people found big ones in garden centers, they would just literally take them down to like little pieces like this and sell them and make good profit at the time which I don't really have an opinion on for the purposes of this video, but it kind of reminds me of that. It's very, very small, and I don't think I got it too much smaller than this. Again, I'd have to compare to my original footage, but there you go. He's lovely though, isn't he? Now, this one is on a lot of people's wish list because it's so beautiful. I'm going to show you even closer if I can, because my lens is looking real good right now. Real good. Don't mind the uh, shit quality of these Amazon pots, by the way. If you're wondering what they are, I'm not actually sure. It's a really, really shitty brand on Amazon. They have a little tray here and they do have, can you see there? Yeah, holes in the bottom. And I do find that they're quite nice for Hoya. So that's what that looks like. Come on, do it. There we go. Look at that. Is that not just the most beautiful Hoya you've ever seen in your life? Focus again. Come on. That is just lovely. I love that. So it's small, but it's really, really sweet. It's really, really sweet. Right, should we pick up another one? Because we've got a lot to get through, guys. I want to show you this Hoya really quick, which actually looks quite stunning. And I'm kind of gutted because last week it was flowering and it's not now. I have a copy of this upstairs that is flowering and it flowers all the time. This one I had in my flat literally, literally about two years. Never flowered, never bothered. I brought the plant here when I moved out. Within a week, it flowered. I'd love to say I'm happy, but I'm also really annoyed at the same time. So the flowers, the peduncles, I do believe you call them. There's one here. Now, I was going to give this to my friend that occasionally visits. You know who you are. Um, I actually left this for her to collect if she would like it, because I do have one upstairs that was supposedly dead, but it actually ended up surviving against all odds. So this is actually for her, if she would like it. If not, I will gladly keep it because it looks so beautiful. But how nice is that? I just can't justify having two when I do have a larger one. And you will see the larger one when we do all of the studio stuff upstairs. It's actually very, very photogenic on camera, this one. And I'm really surprised because it's just, it's just green. So I'll show you it really close up to see what the leaves are like there. They are kind of, it's kind of like a saddle suede. It's really hard to explain. The back's kind of soft, the front's kind of soft, but it, it's it's like a suede shoe. So the suede is really, really fine and, and very, very firm, but that's the best way I can describe it. It's not necessarily when the leaves come in, but when they're hardened off, that's what they look like. And that's a really beautiful plant. You can't, oh, look at that. Okay, I actually thought my Hoya looked like shit. They, they kind of don't. <laughs> at least on camera, they don't, right? Honestly, in real life, they kind of do look like shit. And I'm probably starting with the better ones, to be honest, so. This is Hoya. I do believe it's Hoya Bertonii. Or SP Bertonii, or CF Bertonii, or AF Bertonii. It's something. It's something. But it's very cute, and I do have one upstairs, so if my friend would like this, it's yours. It's yours, and it has a peduncle, so there you go. Right, they're gonna start looking a bit, um, I don't wanna say mangy, but they're, there's, there's stuff going on with these ones, right? These ones should have been propagated, and I just, I just haven't done it. So here we have one of two plants of Hoya AH074, I think. Sorry, I'm doing this from memory, guys. So if I get anything wrong, just politely correct me in the bottom. If I've done the wrong names, honestly, look to the description. 
they will tell you the right names. I will number them as well so you can get the right names if I've done it wrong. So this here is one of my Hoya AH074 Silver. Now I'll hold it up further back and then I'll show you what it looks like up close because here we just have a big long vine basically with root on it. Not really any live nodes that are kicking off, but I'm not really going to focus on that because who wants to see that? So what I will focus on is the foliage and I'll bring it right up. So from my understanding, this is Hoya AH074. What it basically does is it displays silver like this. You can see that there, but it's really random what you're going to get. It's very, very chaotic. So if you wanted to buy a specimen that, you know, looked all like this, it's probably not going to stay. And this is a good example of this. And I spent quite a bit of money on this one. I can't remember how much it actually was. I don't want to quote myself and get it wrong, but it was at least a couple of hundred pounds on this. And I think this was in 2021 or 2020. Oh my God, I can't even remember now. I'm not even sure, but it had a lot of this on already. I don't think it had two of these on. I don't think I've propagated that. I think the person that sold me that might have propagated that. So I guess I've had this come out of here, this new vine. So I've had growth, just maybe not the kind of growth that you'd want. But this is what you get with it though. And I will try and hold it up now without further dropping liquor. I just put my hand over it there. You do get a really wild dispersion of silver and it can be kind of anything look so we have some more splash stuff there and then we go into some super super solid stuff there now it's very 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 nice and if you're into silvery hoya this is probably one for you it's just more sorry i'm pulling my stool it's not like a wilbur graves which we will get onto. it's a bit different i like it i just think there could be stuff that grows a bit quicker i wouldn't say this one was very quick at all again I'm not actively comparing it to my old video. I probably should have watched it before doing this. Never mind. But it, it grows a bit slower. But it is very beautiful. And I deliberately haven't cut this, but I think I'm going to start propagating it as soon as I get a little bit more time, which hopefully coming up, I will. So that is Hoya AH074. It does not have any peduncles, unfortunately. It's not flowering yet. I don't even know what the flowers should look like on these plants. I never actually looked it up, so... I'm going to cover Wilbur Graves first, guys, and then I'm going to show you the other silver things that I bought way back when. Okay, so I've got three Wilbur Graves to show you. Two of them have done good. One of them has done shit. I think I'll start with the one that's done shit in the spirit of um, keeping it even on this video. So we do have on this one, we have a lovely little vine with just roots on it. And this is the actual plant itself. Hopefully, again, liquor will not drop. What has happened is this is a one that I bought off a private seller, and I think this one got stuck in the post for ages. I can't remember the ins and outs of it, but it got stuck in the post for ages and I think the seller managed to get it back, rehabbed it and then sent it back out. And it's just never lived its best life really. It's got a really low amount of silver, which is fine. And obviously I knew about that when I got it. When I got the plant, I had this leaf here and I had this leaf here. I haven't really had much yield out of it. So for the fact it's not grown very well, I'm not bothered because I have two here that I think are quite nice. I've got one that's very beautiful actually. So I'll show you those two now because it's all Wilbur and I don't want to spend too long on them. I don't know the prices of these things now, by the way. At the time when I got these in, there were quite a lot of money. Like I think Wilbur was about easily a hundred plus pounds for two leaf plant. I'm sure it's come down now. I'm sure it has. It must have surely. But this is the second Wilbur here that has grown really nicely actually. There are two different sprigs and one of them's done really well and one of them's just kind of average. So if I can tip that up too. And show it to the camera there. Now that one's quite sexy is it not? Sorry I'll just hold that. This one over here is doing beautifully. Can you see that? I will try and Spin it round for all intents and purposes there. That's done gorgeous. So the thing about Wilbur is they do this. They do this nice silver splashy thing. I think it's, it is a carnosa underneath and they come in and they can go really pinky. I'm going to cover this anyway, what I'm going to say about silver and pink and stuff throughout this video based on my findings. But I'm saying it not knowing what the prices are. At the time when I talked about this plant, for example, the price was much higher than the other silvery plants that I'm going to show you. So please take that with a pinch of salt. Prices might have come way down. I have absolutely no idea. I have not looked this up. But anyway, that is is the second Wilbur and it is famous for the beautiful silver that you will see right there and it coming in a little bit pinky as well which is really really beautiful. The third Wilbur is a bit longer actually. This one's done okay. It's not amazing. That's the end of it. I'll show you that right close up. Come on. Sorry I just have to cover my face there. Really pretty and then you can kind of see the rest of the plant there. There is some very nice silver on it though, I have to say. It's just not as strong as the really pretty silver on this one that is making me drop my 
lecker. I now want to show you two other plants and these, at least at the time of filming last year or the year before, whenever it was, they were cheaper than Wilbur grapes, right? They were a lot cheaper. One was still more expensive than the other, but I bought two silver, silver style, silver splashed Hoya Carnosas and I want to see the difference. Now I could kind of see the difference on the picture, but I really wanted to see the difference for you guys, right? And I realized this update is like so far in the future, it don't, it don't even matter anymore. It don't even matter anymore. But let's just have a juicy talk about my findings, shall we? So I bought two plants at the time. The first one I bought, and this one has taken a bit of a punch. You can see it's taken a, a little bit of, it's, it's not done great. But this one is Hoya Carnosa Freckles or Freckles Splash or something like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't know if this is the similar situation to like loads of skin dabs as where just sellers just make up names. I don't know. But anyway, I bought this plant and you can sort of see the two original leaves or one of the original leaves here. There's silver on it. It's just nothing to write home about. But I have noticed a difference. Sorry, trying to focus it. There you go. I have noticed the difference between this and the other one I bought. And the clue was in the name, to be honest. This has not a lot of silver on it. I also find the leaf shape is a little bit different. But different to what, you ask? Different to this beautiful, beautiful boy here, which I still love, by the way. And this here is Hoya Carnosa Stardust. And this one is so nice. Let me just... Oh, sorry. I, I really am tipping liquor everywhere. You see that there? So you do get a similar thing. You do get a really nice Hoya with silver bits. That is slightly pinky in nature too. You see this here? It is slightly pinky. Given what I've seen of the Wilbur Graves, I'm not sure. This is a Wilbur Graves on in this side. So your right hand side, my left hand side. This is a Wilbur Graves here. And this is the Stardust here. Guys, if you can get a Stardust, if they're cheaper, seriously, I would tell you to get a Stardust and I'm telling you to do that on the basis that I'm pretty sure they're cheaper. Not sure, might be wrong, but they grow so much quicker. This has grown wonderfully and it's really solid. It, it hasn't been taking a dive like some of the others. The Wilbur's have definitely been a bit more sensitive for me than this guy has during its trial, trial of neglect. But if you look at them, there's not a lot in it. And this one's grown... <laughs> Lecker everywhere. Put this back down. This one's grown really quite bushy as well. I'm absolutely adoring that. Hold it right up again, just so you can see, so you can see the back leaves as well. Again, it's not, a, it's not a, you know, a metric foot ton of silver, but it is very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful plant. This is one of my favorites, and I'm pretty sure it was my favorite at the time. I'm not sure, again, I'd have to see the video. I'm pretty sure it was my favorite at the time as well, out of all of the silver stuff I bought. It kind of still is. It's just grown really, really nicely. And in terms of taking a hit, it's done better. Oh, literally, fuck you. This is a nightmare. I did actually put some decorative lecker on the top of these pots before filming. It was a very stupid idea. So just to show you really quickly, this one here is the stardust. This one here is the freckles. So I don't know if you can tell, but the leaf shape is also quite a bit different. Stardust for me, total winner, total winner. But what else do I have that is silver? Oh, I actually have, and I apologize for missing it out, but I have my other Hoya AH074. I bought this one in the documentary, and I think I even unboxed it in some of the footage. But this one here, if you remember, it just had two really big leaves, and they were all silver. That's all it was. And it has grown since. Sorry, I really am trying to cover myself. It has grown since, but not a lot. I'm not going to lie and say it's a lot. It isn't. See that? See, it's just, it's not a lot. It hasn't done anywhere near as well as the other one, but we have to remember the other one was a more established plant. So this one's been really slow. And again, I've neglected all of these. Believe me, I've neglected all of these. Make no mistake. They should all be dead. They should all be dead. And a lot of them are, by the way. Right, next one. I love this one so much. I think I've forgotten the name of this one. I can't tell if it's Hoya Crassiopetiolata or not. Oh, shit. I don't know. I don't know because there's another one here I thought was Crassiopetiolata. I'm not sure. You're going to have to ID them for me, guys. I'm really sorry. You're going to have to ID them for me. Should have put tags in these. It's been too long. It's been too long. So this, I believe, is Hoya Grassy Petiolata Splash. And this was definitely one of my favorites. This one's really unusual. Let me show you this. Can you see that up close? How awesome it looks. It's really weird. It's like very, very matte on the leaf. The veins and everything are quite prominent. Really, really pretty, this plant. Honestly, I love this plant. This plant needs a bit more love from me. Definitely one of my favorites. I would love to see it as a big plant. So what I should probably do is take these as cuttings here on this quite disappointing looking vine and then get it going and then make a nice big hoya. 
definitely want to focus on my hires more this year, 100 million percent. But that's how that's grown anyway. It's a little bit disappointing, I suppose, but it's, oh, it's very special, this one. Look at that. It's very, 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 very special. I love this one so much. I want to say it's quite underrated. I don't know how many people care about this. Let me know, by the way, any opinion on any of these hires as we go. Let me know, because as I said before, I'm out the loop. So I'm going to put him down really quickly. And I'm going to show you the other one that I thought was grassy petio larger as well. But it isn't, because it looks different. Oh, and this one does have a little bit of sun stress. I don't think this is a propagation, but I think I switched it to liquor. And it's done pretty well. You can see it coming out of the pot here. Let me just put it in a more decorative pot. So this, I thought was Crassy Petty or Larger Splash. But again, both of those could be wrong. If you know the right name down below, please put it. So definitely look to the comments if I seem unsure about what I'm talking about. I've got a solicitor ringing me. That's not very useful. That's not very useful at all. Right, they're just going to have to keep ringing, I'm afraid. We've stopped. Okay. They will leave a voicemail if it's important, which I'm sure it is. So I'll tilt this forward and you can see this guy. Again, that, that maroon color on the edge is sun stress. But how nice is that one? If I just pull that leaf out of the way, you can get a better focus. Really, really nice as well. Really, really nice and veiny. This one is definitely more on the glossy side. So really, there's no way that that plant and this plant are the same. Oh gosh, I wish I knew what it was called. And I'm sure whatever I called it originally was right, but I just don't know anymore. But this is a similar situation. It'd be really good to propagate these vines. Is that a voicemail coming through? Yes, that's a voicemail coming through. It'd be really good to propagate these vines and then make a nice big bushy one because this is really pretty. So the last one I have to show you in my cutesy cutesy white pots are my two Hoya Carnosa Grey Ghosts. And they have done quite nicely. Let me just get a good little grasp on these little boys. These have dried out a couple of times, so if they look a bit honestly wilted, dehydrated, stuff like that, they are, they are. They seem to be doing better now. I'm a little bit more on it, but I can see some old dryage on the leaves, but I will try and hold these up to the camera. These are very beautiful if you like Hoya and you don't know about these. I'm sure you do know about these because they are extremely sought after, being a silvery Hoya. Now, honestly, this Hoya, as you can probably tell, has grown a reasonable amount. And I would definitely say it's grown more than the Wilbur has. For some reason, my Wilbur's just hate me. It's grown about as much as the Stardust, I would say. And I think given that these are more silvery, I think that's really quite good. Now, I think there is another Hoya called Hoya Carnosa Nova Ghost, I think. And oh, I shouldn't be saying this because I'm too out of the loop, but I'm pretty sure that the Nova Ghost has different leaf shape. So this Grey Ghost has kind of a long baton kind of leaf shape, not entirely, but a lot more oval, a lot more long. And I think the Nova Ghost is a lot more, you know, like the, the Carnosa Stardust, like a, a more petal pointy shape. So that's the difference. I haven't owned the other one, so I can't really tell you you know, which one's better or not. But this is really, really nice plant. And I should have propagated from them because I think I told you guys when I bought these that one was for me and one was probably for propagation. As you can see, that has not occurred at all. So I don't believe I've cut these. Certainly not looking at these, I haven't. Let me just show you these up again. Yes, that is me dropping luck all. Look at that. They're really pretty, aren't they? Aren't they lovely? It would probably be good at this point if there's no value in them. I'm probably just going to put them together because then I've got a really beautiful grey ghost already, right? Let me know what you think I should do. Are they still worth a bit of money? Should I bother propagating them? Should I bother? Or just make a big pretty one because I'm kind of leaning on the let's make a big pretty one, to be honest. I think that would look really, really pretty in like a kitchen or something. Okay, I'm now going to show you a couple of propagations that I've had going. Nothing necessarily special, I wouldn't say. I think it's all pretty, pretty normal stuff. There's not many either, but I wanted to show you because some of them got really nice silver on them. A couple of them are sunstress, and I've never really seen this Hoya sunstress before, so I really want to show you it. And that is a cutting, one of them, definitely from upstairs. So the first one I want to show you is very, very simplistic. What is this one called? What is this one called? It's uncommon. It might even be common now. Oh my god, guys. I can't remember the names of these Hoya. This is terrible. I don't know. But I propagated it from upstairs. And the mother plant is actually down here. And it is not done well. It's kind of... It's got neglected big style. But I haven't really been too bothered. Because I have a couple of these. And I'll show you the other one in a minute. But I propagated it. And I've got really nice yield on it. Look how nice and silver that is. This one is a lecker propagation, by the way, and I've never really done a whole lot of much. I've put orchid feed on it here and there, just spraying it, and it's been sat in lecker with water and it hasn't even been fed. So all this growth I'm showing you is mostly without any feed at all. So maybe it's behind other people's growth. But I want to show you this one. I can't remember if it's Parvi Flora Splash or not. I want to say it is, but I might be lying. That is the theme of my video today. 
I might be lying. So it's really, really beautiful though, is it not? Look at that. Ooh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's trying to find my hair because for some reason that is a face. Look at that. Oh. So that's one propagation. I do have another prop of it that has taken a different path in life. And that is this one, but it did have some pink on it. Is it still pinky? Probably. So we've got this really big long vine, by the way, like so. Not exactly the prettiest thing you've ever seen. Again, being totally neglected. But if I tilt this up and show you it, we do still have a nice amount of silver. Now this one here, is the camera gonna pick it up? It had pink on it. Yeah, that's picking it up fine there. See, that turns pink as well. So again, in the case of the Wilbur, if you want something that it's silver, but it can go pink, this is a really good one. Is it Publicalix? It's not Parviflora, is it? Do I have a Parviflora then? I remember Parviflora. I do have a Parviflora, it's upstairs. Thank you to those that commented and actually corrected me there. That's what that is. It's Publicalix Splash. I remember now, my brain is engaged. I need some food. What time is it? Half 12, I need to eat, I'm behind on my food. So that is the other one and it does look good. And if you want something that is silvery and pink, go for it. A lot of people say that to get a pink publicalix, you have to buy a different plant. I don't think so. I think it's sunstress. I did hear that rumor knocking about like in 2020. So I don't know how prominent that rumor is, but you can get pink on it without buying a pink one. Put it that way. You do have to stress it a bit though. But I'll show you some good sun stress. Wait till you see this one. I know there's a few fans of this plant. It's not the best condition, but it's kind of cool. So this here, I believe, i show you that to the camera, like that. This is Hoya Dekii. I think yeah, that's how you say it, Dekii. It's got a little bit of splash on it, but not a ton. I just tip this. Look at the sun stress on that. There you go. How cool is that? That is just the best. Let's see if I can try and show you it this way as well. But it is so difficult because this idiot, namely me, put fucking lecker in it. No, I think you just have to have it tilted this way to see it. There. You see that? Amazing sun stress. Amazing sun stress. Very, very pretty. So that's just a quick prop of the Deiki Eye upstairs. It's actually done quite well and you will see it. It doesn't look cute and compact like this one. Admittedly, this one actually looks better in a lot of ways. I like this because it's obviously been partially covered here by other plants. See that? See where the green and red stop? It's obviously been covered by another leaf and that's why that's happened. So it's quite a lot of stress that. That's sitting about eight inches from one of my lights. That's how I've achieved that, by the way. I'm doing anything special, just right under a grow light. It'd probably work, no problem. Then I have a Hoya, I believe, I believe, don't quote me, a Hoya Sunrise. And I'll show you this one very quick. This one looks a bit ugly, admittedly, but it is sunstressed. I know we all like sunstress on our Hoyas. Are you please going to focus just once? Oh, you know what? That looks really nice on camera, doesn't it? That's pretty. So that is a little propagation. I do have another propagation of it. It looks about the same. This one's a little bit all over the place, to be honest. Clearly we've had some depths. The new leaf coming in there though. So that's him. Oh, I think I've got one last one, I think. I think I've shown you everything else. I bought this separately and I don't think you know about it actually. But this here is a really ugly looking Hoya. I think it's Clemensorum. There is this one. There's a little spider behind there. Can you maybe get off? <sighs> Where do you go? Oh, I don't like it when they do this. They fuck off and then you wonder where they're at. Right, he's, he's fine, he's dangling. So anyway, it's Hoya Clemensorum or Clemensorium. I have more of them. They didn't love being propagated. I'm surprised this one's taken to it. I'll show you it. I can't tell you anything about it. I think I just saw it possibly on a suppliers list like two years ago and I liked it and I bought it. I'm looking at one over there now and it came on like a really like woody vine. That's why I was quite in a hurry to propagate because I thought, oh shit, this might not be very good. That one's not doing so well. There might be another one in there. I don't know. But this is a, a cute little prop, I guess. It's not bad. It Clearly, I think it needs a, quite a lot of feed. It's different, is it not? It's very different. Obviously, if the name on that's wrong, let me know. There's not a lot to tell you about this one, though. Other than it was a random purchase. And I'm pretty sure you guys didn't know about that one. I'm pretty sure. Can't confirm, but I'm pretty sure. So that concludes my Hoya update for y'all. Right, so what did we miss in this video? I will try and tell you from memory what we have missed. We do have another one of these upstairs that is bigger. That has been missed from this video. He's fine, he's upstairs. We do have a Parvi Flora that is upstairs and he's grown a little bit. He's, he's getting there. He's very slow. We have a really cute um, Sigillatus or Sigitalis. Can't remember which way around it was. We've got him. He needs a water actually. He's not doing so well. We have a really big Hoya Sunrise upstairs. He's had a bit of neglect as well, to be honest. He dries out way too quickly. I need to crack him open and, and give him some more moisture. What else do we have upstairs? We have Dekii. We have a Macrophylla. 
that has also taken a beating. Now, the things I know that have died, one would be my Hoya Wayetii, the green one. Very, very, very sad about that. Honestly, I will be trying to get another one of those because I really like them. I think they're great. Those are the um, the string bean Hoyas or whatever. Basically, just a green one of the variegated ones I showed you. Really sad about that. My big polyneura went, I think, because I think that was the one that I found mealybug on and I treated it, but it got left in a corner and no one watered it. We all forgot about it, really, and it died. So that's gone as well. So the polyneura situation is not good and I am genuinely looking to make that a better situation because I feel like my mum would really, really want one of those in the house. The fishtail is really, really nice. I'll have to ask her. But that's what we are missing, I believe. There might be one or two more that I've forgotten to tell you about. So please let me know how I did in terms of neglect growing, whether you think they've grown quickly, slowly, anything. I will not be offended. Roast me if you will. And I guess if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know I'm doing a really good job. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, which there is a plethora, then please feel free to subscribe. That's it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this update. Even if you're not into Hoya, I hope you had fun watching it anyway, if you did. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.